What's up everybody, Steve from Flight Brothers here and today I'm doing a review on the Foxeer XAT650M 600 TVL Sony Super HAD CCD camera. What's unique about this camera is that it is a very small version of the HS1177 which is a very common and uh, popular and powerful FBV cam. Also sometimes it's a very similar version of the PZ2040. This camera is very compact. Let me just show you here. Uh, out of the box, it usually has a clear shrink wrap over it, uh, which I've removed so you can see the components of it here. Uh, but before I show you that, I just want to show you the weight here. If you can see my scale, and turn it on. And on the scale it's showing me 13 grams. I think on the website it says 12 grams. Uh, this is showing me 13 grams. And then if you take a look at uh, my ruler here. I know, I know, it's imperial. The full uh, width of this, including the screws, is just just under an inch actually and if I turn it this way we're looking at just under five eighths of an inch so it's very compact uh, compared to the uh, normal board cameras that you see. So how they did this basically they took all the components that you typically find on a board camera and they put them all on two much smaller circuit boards here and they sandwich them together using these nylon spacers and some longer screws that go into the lens holder. So you can see all those components there. The two boards are connected with a little ribbon cable here. And again, you just these nice long screws, they go through those nylon spacers to hold the two boards together and hold the lens holder on here. While I mentioned the lens, this is a 2.8 lens. It's a nice wide angle. It feels really nice when you're flying FPV. It's just the right amount of uh, field of view and it the image is nice and sharp right out of the box. It's focused well. This lens also comes with the uh, lock ring, which is great for any mounts that require the lock ring to tighten down to hold it in place. You got that lock ring already there on it for you. Uh, and again, it, it's focused well right out of the box. And uh, I want to go ahead and show you some f uh, flight footage. This was the first flight I went out. I did not change any settings on the OSD. Uh, I didn't change anything. I just put it on and took off. And you can see as I'm flying over this field, you can see that the detail in the grass is, is decent. You can see pretty well. Um, there's a nice contrast there. Color looks pretty good. Just ignore my flashing OSD. I was having a little power issue on my OSD that day. And I purposely flew with the uh, at the time of day where the sun was low in the horizon there so I could get some shots pointing right into the sun to see how it handled the light. And it's not too bad. I mean, you can still see the ground. You can still see the trees in the foreground there. Just not a whole lot of detail. But it's not bad at all. And I'm, I'm sure uh, when I turn wide dynamic range on later on, it's going to uh, improve that greatly. So just kind of flying around a little bit. Again, these are stock settings. This is right out of the box what this camera is going to look like. And I've used a cheaper CMOS camera and a cheaper CCD camera. And I could tell right away that this was a much better picture. So I want to go ahead and show you what this camera comes with. In the box, you get the camera itself. You get the uh, OSD board here which is the five button version. It's got your up, down, left, right, and your menu button, select button in the middle. It comes with this little four pin jumper cable that will go between the camera and the OSB board. And it comes with a couple of these little uh, three wire video cables. One thing to note before I hook this up is that the different manufacturers of different FPV cameras, 
Not all the cameras have the same pinout order on the back. So if you're sharing connectors, if you have just one connector on your uh, aircraft that you're hooking up your cameras to, you just want to double check that the power and ground and your video out are in the right order before you plug it in. I actually have a different CCD camera and the order is completely different than what's on the back of here. So if I tried to plug that one in, I'd be putting power into video. I'm sure I'd get some magic smoke pretty quick. So you just want to verify that you have the right ones. And most of them are labeled like this as you have power, ground, video, and the M is for the uh, OSB. So if I'm going to hook up this OSB to change the settings, you see these have uh, matching four pin connectors on the back. So I'm going to just take my four pin jumper here and I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug it into the back of the camera. And I'm also going to plug it into the back of the OSB board. And then on the back of the OSB board, there's also a three pin out. That's for video, power, and ground. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna connect this right to my video transmitter so you can see what's going on here. Once I do that, I've got power to my camera. The camera should be on at this point. And in order to get to the menu, put the lens cap on so you can see it better. In order to get to the menu, all I have to do is go ahead and just press this menu button here in the middle and there it is. Okay so let's take a look at our OSD menu here. We have the lens setting which you can flip through and see what that does. Exposure setting this is probably the most important one for you to take a look at if you're adjusting this for your use. You go in here you can set the shutter speed if you wanted to set shutter speed probably best to just leave it on auto. You can adjust your brightness that might help if you uh, have some washout or if it's a little too dark in your goggles or on your monitor, you can adjust that. And wide dynamic range. I would recommend that you keep that on most of the time. That's going to help a lot with changes in light or if you're flying into the sun or uh, if you're doing night flying and you, you're going to hit some lights now and then, street lamps or whatever. Um, it's just going to help to keep you able to see everything around even if you have a, a strong light source in the camera and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. And we can return back. Backlight is a setting you can adjust if there is a strong light behind the subject. Not really something you're probably going to need for FPV so uh, unless you're doing like a long flight directly into the sun that might help but you probably want to just leave that one alone. White balance is adjustable. Uh, day night gives you a couple different settings here. In the special menu, you can add a title if you want, motion, privacy settings, some other different things you probably aren't going to use very often. Image adjust is another one that you might want to take a look at. Lens shade. Uh, DNR is dynamic noise reduction, so that might be something that you want to keep on. It helps to just eliminate any extra shakiness or, um, you know, crackles, things like that. So that's a one you probably want to use. You can mirror the image. Um, font color, contrast, and sharpness are ones you might want to play around with to help the image appear just a little bit better in your goggles. And most of these you want to change while you're actually looking through the camera if you want to adjust it to make it look a little better for you. Change the sharpness, type of display, negative image, and go back. Under DPC, I'm really not sure what this does. It tells you to uh, cover the lens and press the enter key. And there you go some sort of a configuration. Language, you can reset it to the default settings and it can go ahead and exit. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration of wide dynamic range here and what that does for you. So <laughs> let's imagine perhaps this light I'm shining it in. This is a 100 watt light bulb from about a foot away and uh, let's pretend that's the sun. You can see uh, pointing into that you cannot see anything behind it or around it. It's pretty much just that light and everything else is darkness. If I go ahead and turn wide dynamic range on, you can see as soon as it turns on, 
you can see a lot more stuff behind it. You can make out that dartboard behind it in the distance. The neck of the lamp, some other clutter back there. If I turn it back off, you can see all that stuff goes right away. So that wide dynamic range, again on and off. That wide dynamic range makes a huge difference in handling uh, the light situation a little better. And when you're flying around with FPV, you know that you can find yourself in a lot of different lighting situations and wide dynamic range is something that's going to come in really handy. So overall this is a great FPV camera. If you're already used to the performance of the HS1177 or the PZ2040, uh, any of those 600 TVL Super CCD cameras, you, uh, you're not going to be disappointed by this. Even though it's compact in size, it definitely functions just as well and uh, it's going to do a great job for you. It also will fit really nicely in a lot of those smaller frames that are coming out. There's a picture of it in my ZMR250 along with the mount that's available at Surveil Zone as well. And uh, you can see I put yellow shrink wrap back on there. I really feel like with the shrink wrap back on the camera, it's going to keep a lot of dirt and debris, anything from collecting inside there. Uh, and I really think it'll hold up nicely. You don't have that crystal on the back like a lot of CCD cameras have that you got to worry about falling off or covering it in hot glue or anything like that. So uh, uh, I really highly recommend it. Again, it's from SurveilZone.com. And uh, I thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this review and would like to see more, uh, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And uh, we also have some other videos and things like that for you to check out. And thanks for watching.